Welcome to Neurons to Nirvana, a platform for creative forces that embrace the unconventional and the quest for artistry, humanity, innovation, health, and healing of the mind and soul. Join me, Tom Hartridge, on a journey celebrating experiences unbound by physical borders or traditional norms. From inside the mind to the far reaches of the universe, this is Neurons to Nirvana. Welcome back to our third episode featuring artists who performed at last month's California World Fest. During this episode, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the music and spirit of the Gold Souls. The Gold Souls burst on the Sacramento music scene in early 2017 and are one of the most promising new talents in the area. Not only do they bring driving grooves of funk and rich textures of soul, but they also deliver captivating lyrics and fresh arrangements with a vintage sound. One such track that captures their sound is their recent release, 94 Chevy. 94 Chevy is featured during this interview. At World Fest, I sat down with the dynamic lead singer, Juniper Waller, and also with their kind and clever drummer, Billy D. Thompson. Unfortunately, we don't get to meet every member of the band, but as you listen to their music, it is important to know that each member has a hand in writing and song composition, making the Gold Souls a truly collaborative effort. The band has toured all up and down the West Coast, as well as through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and New Orleans. Visit their website, thegoldsouls.com, for tour and their latest music release information. They perform an exciting live show that you will want to catch. Also in this episode, you can join along in the experience through video on my YouTube channel, Neurons to Nirvana Podcast. Without further ado... Let's meet Juniper and Billy of the Gold Souls. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome myself, Tom Hartridge, if you don't know me, um, from Neurons to Nirvana, and I have Juniper and Billy from the Gold Souls. We are at the California World Fest on the final day, and uh, I'm so glad you guys could sit down and speak with me and uh, tell my audience a little bit about yourselves and get to know one another so you all played friday saturday just mm-hmm. so saturday mm-hmm. yep. okay and you all are originally from sacramento you're based out of sacramento We're or based out of sacramento the two of us are originally from the bay area okay mm-hmm. and you had an album that came out last year 2021 and what, what's the name of it again Downtown Sound. Downtown Sound, that's right. And uh, I love 94 Chevy. Awesome. <laughs> it's kick ass. I love the beat. And um, as far as songwriting, are you, who's who's driving that? Are you the lead or y'all? Well, you, we wrote that one. We wrote that one together. Um, the two of us and Alex Severson, who plays keys, okay. um, are the three main songwriters these days. Okay. And all three of us write, we'll write individually and we'll write in combination of two of us mm-hmm. or all three of us. So it's really collaborative. Well, that makes sense that you were involved in writing that because I used to play the drums and 94 Chevy, he's got a kick-ass like back beat. I'm oh, glad you like it. Yeah, man, man I really <laughs> dig it. I really dig it. Bent over the hood of my 94 Chevy, cuffs in hand, they about to arrest me. Then suddenly some shit you wouldn't believe. Cop starts to choke, I think he can't breathe. Fate was on our side, we got away this time. We never saw it.
tell me about the origin or the genesis of the band. How did you guys get together, and when did when did you form? Um, so in about uh, let's see, it was early 2017. Uh, we formed in a basement in Davis, California. Um, Juniper had another band based in Davis and was kind of looking for something a little different. And uh, I had just finished college and was looking to start playing professionally more and stuff. So she asked if I might be down to do a couple gigs while she was transitioning from one band to another. I scoped him. Yeah, I got scoped. <laughs> I headhunted him. Yeah. Nice, um, nice. Still got my head, though. <laughs> um, and yeah, man, we did the first show, and it was a lot of fun. People really liked it, and I was like, oh, maybe there's something to this. And It's been five years now, and still doing it, so. Well, right on, man. So did you go to UC Davis? or? I did you? not. I went to Sacramento State. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. What about you, Juniper? Where did you, were you at Sacramento State? or? Nope. I... Um, I lived in Davis, um, I kind of randomly, but I went to college in New York. I went to Sarah Lawrence College. Oh, great school. Mm -hmm. I studied poetry. Ah, oh, nice. Turned that into songwriting. So you, you know how to read and write? I do. <laughs> Sarah Lawrence is a great school. Is it still all female? No, nope, not since the 70s. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Co-ed is the way to go, man. You got to... We all have to build uh, social skills, right, with yes. the other gender. <laughs> yeah. no, if you haven't done it by college age. Uh, you got yeah. <laughs> it's, it's trying times, if not. Yes. So tell me, how many albums you all have out? We have an, uh, an EP um, that we put out like right away in 2017 when we formed, and then we have two full-length albums: one that came out in 2018, and then the one that came out last year. What about uh, upcoming tour dates? Yeah, so we're taking a few weeks off here just because people are traveling and um, summer's hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to be pretty busy again come September. We've got a lot of um, regional Northern California dates coming up in September. And then in October, we plan to head back up to the Pacific Northwest for a little 10-day tour. Um, we did that, or we did a Pacific Northwest tour last month. Or was it May? Two months ago. Two months okay. ago. <laughs> yeah. Would you be interested in coming down to Texas? Absolutely. Oh yeah, we'd so, love to get back to Texas. It's been a it's been a while, but we in 2018 or 19. 19. Yeah, early 2019 feels like a lifetime ago, but we toured down to New Orleans and awesome. We, uh, yeah, so I know a, a couple of venue owners, but uh, we this lovely lady behind the camera, we and I. She and I, we went to uh, Utopia Fest, so I know the promoters. I think you all would be a good fit to be cool, there. Oh, we'd love it that. It is such a kick-ass uh, festival because it's only one stage typically. Um, well, then they have another stage after the main stage is over. And it's literally from, and it's very kid-friendly, family-friendly. And uh, it is literally from noon to about 8 a.m. the following oh, day. Oh, wow. But it's beautiful. You, you'll see these huge, uh, just the most expansive, breathtaking view of the stars. Mm. Nice. And that's when I, when you look up, it's almost like you know there's something else out there yeah. besides just us humans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Then, uh, what part of Texas is it in? So they, they, they switch it around. We, the last Utopia Fest that we attended, and I interviewed a number of the guests, uh, musicians that performed, it was in actual Utopia, Texas, mm, nice. which uh, is about an hour north of San Antonio. Oh, okay. But the good thing is if, um, if the stars are aligned, I can uh, reach out to Travis and Wayne, the promoters, and see if they'd be interested in letting you guys hop on. Because they do have, uh, I think you all would be, if you're night owls and willing to pull it off, I think you'd be a kick-ass addition to their late night shows Hell yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and we love a good late night okay mm -hmm. good and um you'll dig them man so i'll definitely reach out hold me accountable please sweetheart <laughs> and uh our bass player avery jeffrey is actually from texas okay so awesome Plano. we got to get out to his home state so. all right and th that's up near dallas but yeah. another thing i have in mind where i think you guys would be a great fit is south by southwest yeah that would be great. Wouldn't be mad at that. Have you all ever been to South by? No, the only 
opportunities that we've ever gotten about that were like, pay us five thousand dollars and we'll let you play at South by Southwest. We don't do pay to play, so <laughs> we're waiting for the opportunity where they'll pay us. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is what I love doing is introducing artists to the industry because awesome. music is my medicine. Mm-hmm. It's kept me alive in a lot of. I mean, COVID was super tough for me. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I love comedy and I do that on the side, but yeah. didn't really have that many people to chuckle with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, I'd be happy to do uh, some intros and, and, and you all can take it from there. But oh, much that appreciated. Would be awesome. Why don't you all tell? I'm proud to say that uh, we have just reached over 100,000 downloads. Congratulations. So we're just oh. above the cusp of the top 100 U.S. music interview shows. Fabulous. So oh, I want to give you Congrats. all this. Yeah, thanks, man. I want to give you all this platform out of your own words and prose or poetry. <laughs> Explain to the audience, like, what your music sounds like and so forth. Sure. You want to go first? Oh, uh, sure. Um, so it's sort of evolved over time. If you, like, listen to our catalog, you can hear a lot of different sounds. We uh, have drawn inspiration from a lot of different things, but primarily, like, soul music. Um, uh, kind of late 60s, early 70s soul music has been a big inspiration for us. It was, you know... Uh, a time where the music had a very important kind of cultural role Mm -hmm. and it was like the musician's responsibility to kind of synthesize the the culture at large and and you know represent it in songs and uh that's something that in funk and soul music a lot of stuff you hear these days you know just sort of seems to be about partying or like you'll hear a lot of (laughs) funk songs are just like oh have a funky good time or whatever you know and it's like you know or like uh, so uh, we really wanted to like you know kind of bring back funk music and soul music that like talked about real stuff you know Absolutely. so we have a lot of uh, you know we tackle a lot of like uh, you know issues that women deal with a lot like we write a lot of songs like, we have a song about like you know the anti cat calling song and um, songs about you know like power dynamics and relationships and you know how to like respect one another and uh you know just a lot of things where we feel like the music needs to say something you know real and talk about something real um because like you know it's 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 nice to party and everything like that but like there's like a whole real life happening around us you yeah know, that that's like, true man we're we're, <laughs> we're living in wild times yeah crazy for real times. Yeah. yeah and i'm a self-proclaimed music or more so rock historian but Enlighten me. Uh, who were your main influences from the '60s and '70s in funk? Oh, um, so for me, I, I've always really loved like uh, Sly and the Family Stone. That's Love like them. a California band, Dude, you know. Thank and, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <the> shit. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. No, they have so much great stuff, and they were one of the early bands in that style that like brought a lot of different kind of people from different backgrounds together. Um, and uh yeah there's a lot of other great california bands lydia pence and cold blood is yep. awesome Absolutely. you know um you know, we were listening to her the, almost the whole drive up here oh, yeah. <laughs> um we love etta james um what we a love legend aretha yeah, you know. of course we love uh Oh man, Junie, you want to take some of these? I feel like I'm uh, <laughs> hogging the mic a little bit here. Yeah, Junie, what you got to say? <laughs> well, um, yes, all of those. Um, let's see. For me, other influences: um, Janis Joplin, big one. From Texas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then more recently, I mean, my first love was Whitney Houston. Oh my God, I'm such a huge Whitney fan. Yeah. I want to dance with somebody, dude. When I was like seven, I would oh get down God. to that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and then uh, Bonnie Raitt. Oh, well, yeah, awesome. Right? Are, are you, how about Emmy Lou? Not. Emmy yeah? Lou Harris. Short, She's a yeah. singer songwriter legend. Yeah. My uh, parents are both bluegrass musicians, okay, so that cool. was my first influence. Okay. That was the only music I heard until okay. I was, I don't know, yeah, seven or eight. <laughs> right, until and you could make, you know, wander off and make your own choices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I always loved the bluesy, gospel influenced. Okay. I mean, all of bluegrass is influenced by blues and gospel, yes, but, yes. Um, you know, the bluesier, more gospel bluegrass songs. And... Um, 
and so once I kind of started to put it together where you know everything kind of came from the same source here in in U.S. music, right? And so yeah. once I started kind of following that thread to blues and then and then soul and then funk, yeah, that's, that's how it awesome for me. But I wanted to go back to my original question. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted to speak to um, kind of uh, elaborate on what Billy was saying and and what you were saying about music being medicine uh-huh. and the times, yes. right? And um, one thing that I think clicked for us in the last few years, so I was writing a lot of kind of ballads, right? You know, Whitney Houston is mm-hmm. my yeah. big influence. I love ballads, right? And then we started realizing that like the impact of music that's meaningful and about things and about issues that we're encountering in life that also makes you dance. Yeah. It's like if you c- combine those two things, it's even more impactful, you know, because you can like work it through your body, yeah, you can absolutely. work it out. And so that's, I think that that's kind of the thing that clicked for, for at least the, the three of us, you know, me, Billy and Alex, who are the three members who have been, you know, who founded the band, um, was that we need to be making dance music that moves people, right? That moves people emotionally and also moves people to the dance floor to be in community together um, and to kind of just like, yeah, shake some of yeah. it off, right? Yeah, hell what yeah. What we're dealing with. Yeah, you want to have stuff that you can engage on a lot of different levels. Mm-hmm. You know? Some people are at shows, they're not trying to like think a lot. Yeah. Right. But some people are, you know, and some <laughs> right, people right. like, oh, they go check out the song later and they're like, wow, that's really about something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so I will say to that point, I mean, Hell, when I was a kid, I loved Led Zeppelin, but mm-hmm. until I was about 13, I started listening to the lyrics, and I was like, oh, that whole lot of love is about sex. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and so at a show, they're probably digging your music or whatever, and then they'll go back and say, well, I really like 94 Chevy, or I really like, and they will listen to the lyrics, and that's when it kind of just sinks in. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. I would say California is in my top five states of downloads. So when are your next dates? You got any in the next three to six weeks you'd like to share? Uh, we're kind of taking a little break uh, right here. We're picking it back up again in the fall. Okay. Late Our summer's next... a hard time out here. I hear you, ma'am. Our next date is August 20th. Um, Where? At the Hot Monk Tavern in Sebastopol. Okay. We are opening for Diggin' Dirt. Right on. Awesome California funk band. Um, so that's August 20th. And then after that, the next thing I can think of is September 4th at Moe's Barbecue in Tahoe, right after Music on the Beach. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, this will be out well before that. So we will. I will get the word out. And, uh, nice. Cool. That being said, I will uh, we'll stay in touch, and I'll see if I can get you in Texas ASAP yeah, as soon as great. possible. That'd be awesome. Yeah. We'd love it. Well, listen, guys, uh, I can't thank you enough for joining me. It's been fun. Thanks yeah, for having thanks us. Thanks for having us for sure. It's a good yeah. time. All right, appreciate it. Okay. I want to thank both Juniper and Billy for sitting down with me on the Neurons to Nirvana podcast at World Fest. If you're enjoying our content, please be sure to like and subscribe to the Neurons to Nirvana podcast on YouTube. Would you like a Neurons to Nirvana t-shirt? If so, please fill out the short survey in the show notes for us to send you a free tea. We have only two more episodes left in the World Fest series, and I know you'll enjoy the diversity of our guests coming up the next couple of weeks. I'm grateful to be able to share these experiences with you. And as always, thank you for listening. Until next time, I'm Tom Hartridge, and this is Neurons to Nirvana. Nirvana.